Hi everybody, so in this video we're looking at glycolysis, which is the first stage of respiration. So um, glycolysis takes place in the cytoplasm of all cells, so it doesn't actually need the mitochondria to take place. Um, and that's, so that's the cytoplasm of cells which are multicellular organisms and also lots of unicellular organisms, uh, um, most bacteria as well, will do glycolysis in their cytoplasm. So in terms of the point of this stage of respiration, uh, we're starting off with glucose and turning it into a molecule called pyruvate. And when that happens, firstly, the overall thing that happens is ADP is converted into ATP. So glycolysis generates um, a net gain of ATP. And the other thing that happens is that our hydrogen carrier NAD is reduced. So we end up with reduced NAD. So our hydrogen carrier now has uh, hydrogen and it can then take that hydrogen to the, uh, to the final stage of respiration. It takes it over to the electron transport chain. Okay, so we need to know um, exactly how this works in terms of what happens to the molecules. How do we get from glucose to pyruvate? So we start off with glucose, which is a six carbon sugar. And the first thing that happens is that the glucose is phosphorylated, which activates it. So glucose is um, a very stable molecule. So to be able to break down this glucose molecule, first of all, it has to be phosphorylated. So um, two um, phosphate groups are added. And this is no longer glucose now. This is now called fructose 1,6 by phosphate. Now, in order to do this, we need to get these two phosphate groups from somewhere. So in order to activate the glucose, we actually need an input of ATP. So two ATP molecules are needed, and they donate their phosphate group to our glucose to make our fructose 1,6 by phosphate, which means we end up with two ADP molecules at the end of it. So in order for glycolysis to take place, we have to have an input of two ATP molecules at the beginning. So we've got our fructose 1,6 by phosphate, which is now much more uh, reactive, and we now have to split that up. So we split it up into two three-carbon molecules, and they are called triose phosphate. So they still have their phosphate group attached to them. So we have two triose phosphate molecules. And then we have to get to our pyruvate. So our pyruvate is also a three-carbon molecule, um, but it doesn't have the phosphate group attached. So we have to remove this phosphate group in order to end up with our pyruvate molecules at the end. So what happens then is this phosphate group here on the triose phosphate is donated to ADP which generates ATP. And as you can see, for each triose phosphate molecule, two ATPs are produced. So in total here, we end up with four ATP molecules being produced. The other thing that happens is NAD is reduced, and so we get one reduced NAD molecule for each triose phosphate. So in total, when we start off with one glucose molecule at the beginning, we end up with two reduced NAD molecules. So that's the end of glycolysis. So our reduced NAD, so we have two molecules of reduced NAD, they can move over to the electron transport chain. And we end up with a net gain, an overall gain, of two ATP molecules. That's because we have two here and two here, that's four, but we had to use two at the beginning. So overall, we have a net gain from glycolysis of two ATP molecules. Okay, that's the, oh, no, hang on, that's not quite the end, because I want to think about the fate of the pyruvate. So this links in a little bit um, to the idea then of, of anaerobic respiration and fermentation, but just to give us an, an overview. If we have oxygen, okay, so if there's oxygen present, then that pyruvate that's used, that, that's created, sorry, that's made at the end of glycolysis, um, then moves into the mitochondria, and that means that the link reaction can take place, which means that the Krebs cycle can take place, and oxidative phosphorylation can take place. 
So as long as you've got oxygen, all of these can happen because the pyruvate molecule that's made moves into the mitochondria. However, if there's no oxygen, then these things cannot happen. And that means that we have fermentation. So if pyruvate is fermented, two things can happen. Either lactate is produced or ethanol and carbon dioxide are produced. Lactate fermentation is what we see in mammals and alcoholic fermentation is what we see in bacteria um, and some fungi. Also, sometimes you see that in plants as well. Okay, so that's an overview of glycolysis and then just thinking about what happens to the pyruvate at the end of glycolysis.